Greetings, fellow Agilists and management theory enthusiasts. Welcome to Agile Cast, brought to you by ZBL's Agile Community for Consulting and Transformation, also called Exact. Exact is a global collective of coaches, scrum masters, and product owners, all of whom are passionate about exploring the big ideas and emerging practices in the domain of software development. We really live by our core values of knowledge sharing, and we frequently host webinars, meetups, and an annual conference called Agile and CR to that effect. We also publish the Agile Next magazine, various blogs, and opinion pieces expounding upon the latest trends in Agile and beyond. I encourage you all to visit zbr.com and also connect with us on LinkedIn for more details and to participate in our Agile and Tech community. We'd love to have you on board. My name is Sherry Vasandi. I'm an Agile Transformation Consultant and Coach. Over the last 10 years, I've been helping organizations in various business domains and geographies leverage the Agile methodology to troubleshoot their business and engineering ecosystem and subsequently to optimize it for increased and sustained productivity. Today, we'll talk about the role of a Scrum Master in an Agile organization, and more specifically, the counterproductive anti-patterns and behaviors that this role is particularly vulnerable to. Of course, the identification and awareness of these patterns is half the solution, and any change agent and participant should have the tools to notice and act on these problems in a timely manner. Providing you with these tools, of course, is my goal for today. Having said that, let's dive right in to understand some of the deeper intricacies of this topic. The role of a Scrum Master in the Scrum Framework, or congruently that of any change agent or process coach or flow manager in any other framework, it can hardly be overstated. It is pivotal to landing just the right balance in team dynamics for an agile organization, or one that's aspiring towards greater business and technological agility. If we refer to the Scrum Guide, that 19-page, incredibly succinct and logical document, in my opinion, that any management professional should read at least once, the role of the Scrum Master is one that is elucidated to the greatest level of detail with separate sections dedicated to a Scrum Master's services to the product owner, to the development team, and to the organization. This is no coincidence. Being in a position of such great influence, the missteps, failings, or errors of a Scrum Master are magnified manifold in the outcome for a team or a program. Therefore, we must be especially careful when approaching any dysfunctions related to this role. Today, we'll talk about four Scrum Master anti-patterns in detail and dissect the circumstances amongst which they commonly emerge and thrive. Anti-pattern number one is the Scrum Master acting as a communication conduit. The word conduit means a channel for transmission. In this particular case, a channel for communication. The most frequently observable symptom this problem is that the Scrum Master acts as an intermediary between the product owner and the development team members. For instance, when the developers have a query about the rules of a particular feature during implementation, they direct that query to the Scrum Master, who then forwards it to the product owner and then passes the answers back. Similarly, when the product owner may have a question about the technical dependencies between two features, they may direct that query to the Scrum Master instead of the team or conversations about release planning or scheduling involve the Scrum Master as a negotiator instead of a facilitator. And the development team and product owner do not directly speak to each other frankly. This could also apply to non-functional requirements or feedback on features or so on. Now, in a healthy Scrum team dynamic, things look very different from this. The Scrum Master is responsible for ensuring that the interaction channel between the product owner and the development team is extremely active and free of hindrances. But by acting as a communication conduit, the Scrum Master becomes the very obstacle they're supposed to prevent, ironically. This can cause a host of issues. For example, delays due to the team getting habituated to a relay of information, or details being lost in translation, leading to incorrect decisions and misunderstood expectations, or this frequently signifies a power imbalance wherein the less powerful party makes compromises and the Scrum Master becomes the enforcer of this imbalance. Negotiations on quality versus speed of delivery are made while being separated from the hard facts that would come to the surface otherwise if business and tech were communicating closely and directly. 
Finally, it leads to divergent behavior and parts of the team no longer aligned to a common goal. The product owner slowly gets more siloed in building roadmaps to the pressure of business demands. Simultaneously, the team gets siloed in technological challenges that business does not understand. This leads to greater probability of unaddressed conflicts and risks arising over a course of time and increase the management overheads in tackling them. All of this paints a rather dire picture, doesn't it? But the good news is the solution isn't very complicated at all. There's a four-step cure to this particular problem. Number one, the scrum master, or failing that any other person close to the team, should carefully observe communication patterns in the team and try to log instances and examples in an as objective and non-critical a manner as possible. Number two, they should build awareness in the team about the effects of this anti-pattern and encourage discussion about it in the sprint retrospective. Number three, Rotational facilitation responsibility of scrum ceremonies amongst team members can be an effective method to break this anti-pattern. And finally, and most importantly, building a mindset that considers the product owner as a part of the team and rejects the notion of a hierarchical relationship between the development team and the product owner. This takes work in gentle persuasion and coaching, but it is certainly a cause worth investing in since it pays off not just in forms in terms of a reduced delay and risk, but in the sense of collaboration and empowerment in the team. Now moving swiftly on, we come to anti-pattern number two, which is role stagnation for a scrum master. This pattern is characterized by the scrum master doing the same thing week after week, month after month, year after year for a single team or program. The scrum practitioners listening may have heard the phrase velocity is like a helium balloon, which goes to say that as time progresses and stable teams become more familiar with the product requirements, technologies and working agreements, productivity should increase on its own, unless there's a clear and present factor holding it down. Like the proverbial helium balloon, something is holding it down. The same principle applies to the capabilities of a scrum master. As time progresses and the team is coached towards a greater level of self-organization and cross-functionality, the day-to-day -day responsibilities of a scrum master should change. As the team evolves, so should the behavior of the scrum master, from more tactical to more strategic. A general example of this progression might be that in the beginning, the scrum master may act as a facilitator of scrum ceremonies and as a moderator of negotiations and scope and schedule amongst team members. Later, the role should shift towards that of a coach and a guide who intervenes periodically to catalyze continuous improvement in the organization, but the team is largely self-driven. This shift in role and responsibilities is essential to the growth and the maturity of a team as it is mutually advantageous to all participants in the scrum process. Development team members benefit from taking ownership of their engineering practices and thinking critically about their own options. Scrum masters benefit from augmenting their skills with more strategic and intellectually challenging work. Product owners benefit from the increased commitment on behalf of the team. Not only this, the entire organization benefits from better proliferation and cross-pollination of best practices and the resulting community centered around sustaining a culture of investing in improvement instead of simply maintaining the status quo. Now, having established the nature of the problems that originate from the role stagnation of a scrum master, there are certainly some measures that can help prevent or cope with such an eventuality. A few options to be considered are, number one, establishing a set of organization level guidelines and resources to educate scrum masters of this expected role transition and evolution. Number two, establishing a community of practice or guild that offers mentorship and guidance for scrum masters. Number three, a policy of rotating scrum masters amongst different functions, programs, or teams can help prevent stagnation since the role often requires a shift based on the needs of a particular team. Or number four, a periodic health check of agile practices should include an assessment of role evolutions in the team. Now, 
Coming to anti-pattern number three, which is the Scrum Master as a product owner. This pattern is one encountered very frequently in organizations attempting a transition to agile from more traditional project management methodologies. Frequently, as a carryover from traditional project management, the role of the Scrum Master and the product owner are conflated. This could either take the form of a Scrum Master actually acting as a product owner or acting as a proxy for a partially present product owner. Some common observations associated with this pattern are that the Scrum Master writes user stories and prioritizes the product backlog, or the Scrum Master prepares the product roadmap and maintains the release burnups, or whenever a person requires information about milestones, release dates, and schedules, they reach out to the Scrum Master and not the product owner. And finally, and this is the most problematic, Despite all of this, the actual product owner or business owner provides feedback on the final product that is developed or the potentially shippable increment produced at the end of a sprint. Now, this is such a clear violation of Scrum rules that it often raises alarm bells uh, for any practitioner familiar with the framework. However, in order to clearly elucidate the risks created by this pattern, we will focus on two problems. Number one, in this situation, the loop of defining requirements and providing feedback on the features developed to serve those requirements is not closed by the same person. Scrum largely derives its power from this closed loop, the absence of which is likely to cause delays, dissatisfaction and rework. The same person that defines a requirement should provide feedback on the feature built to meet those requirements and thereby close the loop. Number two, there is a very clear reason for the Scrum framework having two separate roles for a Scrum master and product owner. This is because if we make the same person responsible for speed of delivery, quality of product, and the reliability of the process, the negotiations and compromises made between these often conflicting goals and objectives suffers from a lack of transparency. When we have two different individuals in charge of these aspects, this ensures that they challenge each other to the appropriate degree, and any negotiations that are made here are visible, verifiable, and transparent. Now, in order to avoid an emergence of this anti-pattern, it is necessary to build awareness about these two conflicts, not only in the teams that are immediately affected, but also in the functions concerned with resourcing and staffing in the organization, especially human resources. And finally, we come to anti-pattern number four, which is that the Scrum Master acts as a scribe or a documentation clerk. Now, if there is one most egregious error in the area of Scrum Mastery, it is this. Turning a talented Scrum Master into a document writer, presentation drafter, scribe, documentation clerk, or project coordinator who lives in PowerPoint and Excel. I mean no disrespect to any of the roles I mentioned here because they are absolutely vital to the success of a program and execution. But there is no greater disservice to a Scrum team than to ignore the core skills of a Scrum Master simply because the organization isn't ready for a change. And you'd be surprised by exactly how often this really happens. Scrum Masters spend upwards of 60% of their weekly work hours building reports and presentations. It is truly disheartening. This is a symptom of organizations with heavy management overhead, building reports that can be automated, documenting meeting minutes that should be driven by outcomes, and maintaining an audit trail that should be built into the asset resource uh, information and data management processes anyway. It's the worst possible use of a Scrum Master's time that should rather be freed up to allow this individual to spend it on optimizing the team's engineering practices, engineering process, resolving impediments, and ensuring a healthy team dynamic. Fortunately, the solution for this is relatively simple, as long as there is a culture of openness. Number one, the Scrum Masters community should be encouraged to define the appropriate balance between the benefits of optimized versus standardized reporting. Additionally, all reporting must be tied to specific goals. We must, after all, measure that which we want to improve. Then, reporting should be automated to the degree possible and require minimal effort. It should be produced in a repeatable and consistent fashion with minimal effort. Then, reporting should be visible and transparent as possible. 
Teams should be encouraged to use reports as a tool to troubleshoot and identify areas of improvement instead of seeing it as a report card or demonstration of success or failure. Program leadership should be coached in using the same task management tools as the teams to minimize the information gap and eliminate the need for translation from JIRA boards and tasks to Excel sheets and PowerPoint presentations. On a related note, for a Scrum Master, having sound knowledge of task management tool capabilities like Jira, Rally, Trello, etc. has become a far more essential skill now. In order to first of all understand how much of their reporting responsibilities can be automated and number two, to negotiate their role away from clerical reporting responsibilities. Now with that said, we come to the completion of our four anti-patterns. It completes our discussion of the key Scrum Master anti-patterns. We've covered a fair amount of ground on this topic, so let's take a minute to quickly recapitulate. The first anti-pattern we've discussed today is when the Scrum Master acts as a communication conduit. The most active channel of communication should be directly between the development team and the product owner, not through a Scrum Master. The second was when there is a role stagnation for a Scrum Master. This tends to create a domino effect in the team. Complacency is contagious and agile teams must evolve over a course of time. The third is when the Scrum Master acts as a product owner. There is a fundamental conflict of interest in this scenario because when we make the same person in charge of the pace of delivery and quality of process, any decisions taken in negotiating these two interests suffer from a lack of transparency. Number four is when the Scrum Master acts as a scribe or documentation clerk which is the worst possible use of their time, which should be spent catalyzing continuous improvement in the team. In conclusion, I would like to say that it's easy to follow the path of minimum resistance when it comes to organizational change. It is therefore not surprising that the role of a change agent is most vulnerable to patterns of dysfunctional behavior. But also, in no other role is complacency more damaging than that of a scrum master, because they are in an extraordinarily pivotal position. The impact of their actions is magnified in the outcome produced by the team. Therefore, it is crucial to keep an eye out. Hopefully, this discourse has left you better equipped to identify these issues early and tackle them in a manner that's quite expedient. With that, we come to the end of today's podcast. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe and share on LinkedIn. And thank you for joining me.